I thought when I got into the role, I cannot fail this. I cannot, I have to really focus on getting it right, you know, and, and getting the support right to make, to make me better in order that I'm able to deliver and make it right so that, that black people are seen as, as people who are capable of doing a job at the highest level. Black people, black women. Black. England. I'm proud. You were born in Lewisham, right? And then grew up in Peckham? Uh, yes. Born in Lewisham Hospital. Yeah. And grew up in uh, Peckham. Then moved a little bit further out to Greenwich. The proper South London. South, very south, yeah. <laughs> how, was, how was your childhood in Peckham and how did that help your journey um, into football? So I played a lot of street football, best education ever. You know, back in the day we used to have these cages. So, you know, you couldn't break any windows and I'd be in there with the boys and just, just playing every day after school. I got in trouble every day for staying out late. But um, being on the streets and playing with, boy, with the boys was a real education for me in football. What was like um, a standout experience of that? Like, what was like one story that really sticks out to you oh that you really God. enjoyed? Um, there's so many actually. I, I, th I think one particular story when I was um, basically in Greenwich, I, I grew up on an estate and um, it must have been in the summer. What felt like hundreds of boys congregating in this big it's called the british oxygen company they had their own i never forget it they had their own training ground and all the kids from the estate would congregate there all the boys and you'd play football and i was the only girl and i remember them splitting the teams up yeah you're picked you're picked you're picked you're and i got picked that day to play the first time ever um and, and I just remember the feeling, it felt like I'd been picked for a professional side or something. But the fact that I was playing against the boys, with the boys, more importantly, I was better than most of them. Um, it, it felt like a real honour for me. So was football then a big part, I guess, of your family? Not my family, not necessarily. I my, my parents are, are Jamaican, they come here. Girl childs are not really about playing football, it's not the thing. Um, I think my thing at school was just sport. I, I was quite good at everything, but my passion was football. Um, and I used to, you know the film Bend It Like Beckham? Oh, I was that girl. Best film. Yeah, but I was that girl. I sneaked out and <laughs> stayed out, got in trouble. I went through all of that yeah. and, until I think the realization that my mum could see that actually was keeping me out of trouble. Actually, she's not bad at it. You know, let her keep playing, but initially it was not a thing that I should be doing. I really love yeah. how, like, the similarities between, like, even your story and, I guess, my own interpretation yeah. to football is all very similar. I guess it's, like, people thinking women, fo football isn't for women and therefore mm. just being, like, but still trying to make it happen in different ways. Yeah, and I think the culture as well, you know, J Jamaican culture back then was, like, you know, the females would do certain things, yeah. cooking, cleaning and all that, and the men would go out and, I don't know, catch fish and be the breadwinner. I wasn't having any of that. So I was very, I was quite rebellious <laughs> as, a, as a young child. Yeah. Um, you know, when, when you're given chores to do, you know, you'd be given the, I don't know, I don't know, the cooking bit, and I yeah. wouldn't do it unless my brother would do it. There were, yeah, no, I'm not doing it unless he's doing it. So yeah, I think culturally very different. What was your experience like as a young kid or even as an adult travelling back to Jamaica? Yeah, we, I, I have been many times. I think the first time we went, I was 10. Yeah. Um, so, and I, my culture and family is very, you know, you, you hear all the stories of Jamaica and I'm so glad that I've met all of my family. My mum... Um, one of eight, my dad, no, my mum one of nine, my dad one of eight. And uh, I met everybody, all my hundreds of cousins. And going back as a young kid, it was five minutes. It felt like home. I was so young, you know, you walk in barefoot, you in the mango tree, it was just lovely. We went for six weeks. It felt like six years. 
when you're a young kid. It was yeah. brilliant. A lot of people wouldn't probably, they see your accolades and see all the amazing work that you've done as an England coach mm. and now as a Brighton coach. And they might not remember you so much as a player, but mm. how was that journey and then making your debut at 16? But tell us a little bit about that growth. I played street football. Yeah. I got into organised football, i.e. Uh, club football when I was 11. I played for Millwall Lionesses. At the age of 11, I heard that there was an England team. Yeah. I thought, oh, great. And I thought, I'm going to play for England. And then I knew I would play for England. I wanted to play for England. It was my ambition at the age of 11. And um, I played for Mill Lionesses. We were quite successful. I always felt I was a pretty good player. Yeah. Um, and then at 16, you, you know, you have scouts. That, even back then, you had scouts come in and and looking at players and I got selected at 16 and then subsequently played for England, which was an absolute honour. It was a big deal. Probably appreciate it more now than yeah. I did then. And what were some of your highlights during that career as an England player? I was made vice captain, which was, which was a real honour. Going to a World Cup in 95, yeah. um, we got going playing in the European Championship final, which I'm not sure people would know this because it was run by the Women's Football Association then. We got to uh, a European Championship final, we actually got a silver medal. What was um, the England setup around? Because I know we look at the England setup now and there's oh. lots of talk about diversity and stuff. What was the setup back then for you? Um, it was quite diverse. There yeah. were the more people of colour then, I think, in terms of playing. I played with Brenda Sempari, Black, Kerry Davis, Black, Sammy Britton. Black, um, and it felt more diverse perhaps then than it than it looks now. Yeah. It, when I was manager, that you know, it was Rachel Yankee and Nita Asante, um, but it seems to be less and less. I think Demi Stokes. Yeah. Um, is there anyone else? Jess Clark's come back yeah, into Jess the fold, which is good to yeah, see. Yeah, Jess Clark has come back in. Jess Nikita Clark Paris. Yeah. Nikita Paris back in. So that that's quite yeah. nice to see. But back then, yeah, you know, I played with with. Uh, black people in the team, which was really What do you cool. think some of the reasons are that, I guess we see a little bit of a lack of diversity. I know we've mentioned a few that have come back into the team, but it's probably not the heights it was as early as maybe yeah. when you were playing and then yeah. when you were managing and you had a lot of talent coming through. Yeah. I, I, I honestly think it is, it, and I say this all the time, and I truly believe this, in, in professionalising the game yeah. and wanting facilities to be better, for, for young girls, the ex the accessibility of better is quite hard to reach. Yeah. Um, so, for example, we have an academy that's set up here, which is lovely. But and this is not just this club; other clubs. I'm not sure that it's easy for the inner city yeah. poorer kids to get to, um, which is really unfortunate. So, with the best will in the world, all it's it's been professionalised, looking at better facilities. We want girls to feel special, which is great. But the bit that, that we miss, and I say we because I was at the FA at the time, was, yeah. you know, how are, how are young, how are parents from low income families, no yeah. car, going to get to these, these places, these centres that are quite often in leafy suburbia, one yeah. bus every hour, you know, you, you, it's hard. And I think that has been a bit of an issue with with black players coming through, unfortunately, you, you know, in, in terms of am I going to put petrol in my car to go and drive all the way out to leafy suburbia yeah. or am I going to put food on the table? And I really think it's a lot to do with that. Yeah. It's accessibility, I think, that has been a problem. But I believe one that is being addressed through the air. For you, um, obviously having such a great playing career and then becoming the youngest England manager, because first woman, first black woman, mm. and then becoming the first woman to get a pro and license. Mm. All of those moments, and I remember I remember, I read an interview that's where you said, you know, you wanted to do this right when you came into an England manager, you wanted mm. to fulfil this role for women and for mm. black women. Mm. What is it about that that really inspired you? Um, oh, I, th I think when the role was offered to me, I, I, I deliberated quite a bit whether I should or I shouldn't. Yeah. Um, 
and was convinced absolutely you should. It would be a mistake not to, and absolutely right. So I thought when I got into the role, I cannot fail this. I cannot, I have to really focus on getting it right, you know, and, and getting the support right to make, to make me better in order that I'm able to deliver and make it right so that, that black people are seen as, as people who are capable of doing a job yeah. at the highest level. Black people, black women. So it was, oh, it, that was a real driver for me. I cannot fail this. As scary as it was, I cannot fail this yeah. because what comes next is important to me. And so, you know, and this, this phrase, if you can see it, you know, you can be it, is absolutely, whoever came up with that, what was her name again? I can't remember, but absolutely right. So it, it, for me, it was important to get it right and be the best I could be so that decision makers look at someone like me and go, actually, you know, we're not going to judge her yeah. on a, you know, which some would argue has happened before, the colour of your skin, the gender, you know, let, let's judge on capabilities and actually black people have the capability, yeah. black women have the capability because look, they're, there, she's done it. What were um, some of the moments, I guess, the highest moments for you as an England manager, having taken what was such a big task on board? Um, I think qualifying for the 2007 World Cup, um, definitely the Olympics in 2012, an absolute standout moment, um, best experience I've ever had in football. And this was all based on the fact that I didn't want to do it. I had all my friends and family in my ear going, you're crazy, why wouldn't you want to work at the coach at the Olympics, my response. And this is the thing people don't realise. When you have been for however long I was England manager and then as a player every summer, not having a summer at home, travelling, working, I thought it'd be really nice just to watch it at home and put my feet up without having to travel anywhere. So you got to remember 15, 20 years, player, I've been on the travelling, travelling. It's quite exhausting. Um, so that's why I didn't want to do it. It was to give myself a chance to breathe and have a rest. But I actually changed my mind because everybody was going, hey, you got to do it. You go, OK, OK, all it was right. an experience that you ended up really loving oh, it's and the best. so fun. I'm so pleased. You know, I'm not always right. I'm happy to say I was wrong to not want to do it because when I did it, bar none, it has been the best experience I've had in football. The absolute low point was when I lost my job. So, you know, 15 years of heart, of greatness, and then five minutes, the last five minutes were the worst. But generally in that role, it was absolutely fantastic. There's one of the probably one of the most high profile black coaches in football and mm -hmm. the only women's black coach in women's football. Mm -hmm. What do you see as being, I guess, how can we motivate more black and brown people to come into football from a coaching perspective? Because I think probably are there with players or try and growing yeah, that journey, yeah. but from a coaching perspective? Um, that's a really good question, actually, and I don't, I don't honestly know if I've got the answer, but I think a really good starting point would be to make um, courses accessible and affordable. Yeah. Um, because in order to get qualified quite often, there's a course maybe that's, I don't know, 100 miles away that costs X amount of pounds that actually I can't afford and I'm not going to make that journey. So I really think there's an, a bit of an issue with accessing courses and really, am I, if I'm a new young coach wanting to get into coaching, can I afford it? Because then after that, am I going to get any return on my investment? So the number of female coaches currently in the game is there enough space for me to get in the game after I've paid out all of this money to access the course? Is it, I, I sometimes wonder that, that coaches, young coaches, black, white, wonder whether it is worth it. Yeah. I do wonder that, you know, can I access it? Can I afford it? If I can access it and I can, you know, I can just about afford it, am I gonna get to coaching the game? down the line, I, I don't know.
but definitely accessibility and affordability would be the starting point. You've seen the women's game at all levels. You've seen it where you work Monday to Friday, you show up Friday after work, play the Saturday. This train on concrete. Now exactly, train, train on, on concrete. It's mad. It is. I think the nice thing is, and, and I'm, I'm, I feel very blessed and privileged to still be in it. Yeah. Because I've seen it when it was, you know, trained on concrete, trained in a five-a-side cage, had to buy every piece of kit I ever wore, worked with, with coaches who volunteered and gave up their time, yeah. were not experts in all the other, the multidisciplinary team, did it for the love of the game. You know, we had to wash our own kits, we had to pay subs. You know, all of those things that people have just forgotten. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's really important that we remember that, that a lot of people, even before I played, a lot of people did so much that enabled me to play. Um, and I don't think we should ever forget that. I think it's really important to recognise where it was, where it came from, the things that were done and put in place to make it really nice and comfortable and you can make a career out of being a yeah. professional football. Who'd have thought that? I know, I want a facility like this. Who'd have thought? As someone that's gone from, in, you've had so many roles in football, you were a player, I guess, a leader and a coach and a manager. What would you say your legacy or, or you hope your legacy is in football? Oh, am I the right person to ask that question? Of course, sir. I don't know. Um, I, I find that question really hard to answer. I, th I think for me, you know, if somebody's look, talking about me as a person, you know, I, th I think maybe that they would say that, that I dedicated my myself and my time to, to try and move the game forward, to give it every opportunity to, to move forward. I, the women's game has always been so important to me that I want women in it to do well and have opportunities to do well. International Women's Day, the theme for this year is breaking the bias. What does that mean to you? Firstly, International Women's Day. It should be International Women's Day every, every day. day. I think it's a one day is just <laughs> not enough. And I think breaking the bias, I think it's, it's basically, uh, you know, I guess making a statement showcasing that actually what, what you think is probably male-dominated, male-led, um, is actually women are more than capable yeah. of doing anything, anything in this world that we want to do. And that includes being a coach, being a footballer, being a manager, anything. Talking about what we've spoken about over the last couple of minutes, like what does the statement Black, England and proud mean to you? Number one, I'm proud of who I am. And number two, I'm proud of the fact that I am a black English woman, but I'm also very proud of my black heritage. <laughs>